Let's dig a little deeper into this. I want to bring in IDF International Spokesperson Major Dodon Spielman to talk about what is happening on the ground right now. Uh, sir, thanks so much for spending some time with us. I know you're incredibly busy, uh, but tell us. I find it remarkable that uh, with all the technology, all the intelligence uh, that the IDF has, that essentially, and you know this as an officer in the Army, that uh, three or I guess a number of really, really good soldiers just on patrol ultimately found Sinwar um, unexpectedly. And that is kind of remarkable in, in any type of military operation. But as you know, it happens frequently. Uh, thank you for having me, Vlad. I, you know, I think that, you know, Sinwar didn't fall from the sky. Uh, that would have been a great stroke of good luck. We did have some good luck, though, and these were not standard patrols. We have to understand that the IDF was operating on the assumption that there were terrorist commanders of Hamas operating in that area of southern Gaza, which is known as Rafah. We were acting on that intel, and the way that we moved forward through this area was restricting the movements of those terrorists to a narrower and narrower corridor with the hope that senior terrorists, obviously, Sinwar being the most amongst them, would leave their tunnel hideouts and try to seek shelter in another area like a fugitive and make a mistake. And in fact, that plan did work. Uh, we were lucky that it was Sinwar that did this. He moved into a building that had already been shelled. He was hiding out in the building with two other people. Uh, in fact, they made he made his last mistake, which was, which was that they actually fired towards Israeli troops, attracting our attention. As we came closer, they threw grenades at our troops. We then shelled the structure. Sinwar was separated from the other two people who were guarding him. He fled with money and IDs. He's sitting in the chair exactly as you're sh showing on the screen. Our drone moves into the room and shows us that there is a jihadi terrorist who was there, tries to throw something at the drone, at which point a shell is fired by a tank towards the building, and the evil mastermind of October 7th, who is Israel's Osama bin Laden, was thankfully eliminated. So it wasn't all luck, but trust me, we'll take whatever luck we can get. Absolutely. Uh, and thank you for that play-by-play -play of that video, uh, giving us the details of what we're actually seeing on the screen there. Um, so now let's talk about uh, the concerns uh, of what this means for the fate of the hostages. Uh, it's been reported that uh, the last time uh, the IDF got close to Sinwar, he had surrounded himself with some of those hostages. Um, and it, during his attempt to flee, he had those hostages brutally executed. I don't know if you can confirm that, but but that are that is the reporting that we've seen. And so now, of course, folks who are worried about their loved ones uh, are concerned about the fate of the remaining hostages. What is your understanding? First of all, uh, all of us are not only concerned, we're torn apart personally by these hostages. Just to put this in perspective, Israel is a country the size of New Jersey. It's a total population of 10 million people. And to have over 1,000 people killed and 250 hostages, 101 of which remains, each family, including my own, those families whose children are hostages or grandparents who are hostages. It's the first thing we wake up in the morning and think to, and it's the last thing we go to think about before we go to sleep at night. It's an incredibly difficult situation. We understand at its very core, Sinwar and Hamas took those hostages to use them as a bargaining chip. They are the last bargaining chip that they're gonna use. They could care less about the lives of these hostages and there's no goodwill here whatsoever. We along this campaign have been operating surgically to try and rescue our hostages. We've managed a few times. However, the key to this very well may be what happened last night with the toppling of Sinwar and all of his terror operatives, seeing the head of that organization fall, it disables that organization, it causes it a shake to be a shakeup. And as the prime minister said, as President Biden said and Kamala Harris, there could be an opportunity here. We're able to move this to the next level. We want to bring our people home, but we cannot give Hamas a pass. There can be no ceasefire that enables that terror entity to survive in Gaza. If that happens, the next round of hostages is just waiting around the corner. Um, let me ask you about this, Major. The IDF, as you know, is obviously continuing its operations in, in Gaza. But, but so people will look at this, and it's not just Yahya Sinwar that you've been able to take out. You've taken out many, including predecessor leaders of, of this organization um, and others. Do you feel that you're achieving your objectives, your military objectives? I know the ultimate objective is to bring those hostages home and to destroy Hamas, but how do you feel you are along the path, the military as a whole? 
So first of all, we have to understand we're facing an enemy, which is Iran, the largest sponsor of state terrorism in the world. We are being attacked on seven fronts by Iran. And if Iran thinks that Israel's vulnerable, like they felt on October 7th, that's when they launched their terror entities against us. What have we shown? And this is in direct answer to your question. We have eliminated now Hassan Nasrallah, Yahya Sinwar, Muhammad Def, which is his number two, and Ismail Haniyeh, the previous head of Hamas that was in Beirut, along with hundreds of other Hamas leaders. And the message is very clear, and this is an important military message. Wherever you are, if you think you're going to threaten Israel, you might run, you might try to hide, hide even behind your own innocent civilians or in tunnels. Eventually, we will find you and you will face justice. That is an important message to terrorists or to anyone thinking about being a terrorist. That should dissuade them from entering into this foray. At the same time, we have made phenomenal military progress. Our troops have moved forward through Gaza, eliminated much of Hamas, but we are not at the day after until we can reach the day before the day after, which is the complete dismemberment of that military organization. Mm. Uh, Major Spielman, one other thing. Uh, the United States has uh, asked Israel uh, or has uh, warned Israel that it faces a potential of stoppage of military support if it does not do more to allow aid into Gaza in the coming weeks. Uh, can you ex explain to the American people what you are doing to ensure that uh, not only more aid is entering Gaza to those uh, civilians who need it, those innocent civilians, those children, um, but that the aid is actually reaching those who need it, which which is which are not the terrorists, but the people who are trapped under the boot of those terrorists. Absolutely. We take the United States concerns very seriously. I myself take them very seriously, and Israel takes the concerns also of the Gazan people very seriously. We have sent in thousands of tons of aid since the beginning of this war, and we're continuing even today. We had over 60 trucks of aid reach into northern Gaza. The situation is incredibly difficult because still, whatever remains of Hamas, their first priority is to get their hands on that aid. Also, all of the humanitarian agencies, whether it be the United Nations agencies, in most cases have not been helpful. They've been unhelpful about distributing that aid. And so it's an incredible challenge. However, we've taken it very seriously. We've ramped up as much ability as we can to allow that aid into Gaza. I don't want to see these pictures on the screen any more than you do. You know, this was really Sinwar's plan. He was hoping that he would starve his own people so that world pressure would come on Israel. And in that respect, there has been some success. We should know that Sinwar died protected by two guards with tons of money on him, IDs, and a full stomach of food. That was the cowardly way that he died, but he left behind him all these Gazan people who are facing the hardships. We want to try to solve this. We want a brighter day for the people of Gaza. The elimination of Yahya Sinwar blood takes us this much closer to making that happen. We need a few more steps, and hopefully we can put this war behind us and see a brighter future for Israel, for Gaza, and for the Middle East. And that is the hope for everyone. Uh, Major Dodan Spielman, thank you very much, sir, for spending some time with us. Thank you. We appreciate it.